Welcome, everybody, to the Cover 2 Podcast Special Edition, our annual NFL season preview is right now. This is Jared Nice. That's right. Uh, one of our favorite shows of the year. Oh, I apologize. I'm Nick Ninas. I'm Jared Smith, apparently. Yeah, no, I, uh, Jared, I'm too excited to uh, to even get the podcast going like normal. No doubt, uh, man, no doubt. Yeah, this is going to be our NFL preview. Obviously, uh, I think the NFL season has snuck up on all of us. Uh, we have had no preseason games. No Hall of Fame game, no training camp, no mini camp, nothing. Uh, really, just we're going to find out how all these teams are going to play week one, which is this week. First game Thursday, Chiefs and Texans on the NBC like usual. Chiefs, the defending champions, they'll do that whole spiel. Uh, apparently, I think, Jared, they have 20,000 people going to that game, too, which should be interesting to watch as well. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Better than nothing. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, and, and more than most of the crowds, too. So that'd be a good start to the season. Um, and then, of course, all the rest of the game, Sunday and then uh, Monday as well. But, uh, Jared, your thoughts. I mean, NFL starting this week kind of snuck up on us, but your thoughts just off the top of the bat before we get into the preview. Yeah, no, it's, you know, we we just finished up Labor Day weekend, and typically baseball is the only sport that's on the docket right about now, right? Uh, and as you see, we've got the NFL just starting. Um, we have the NBA going on in, in the second round of their playoffs right now. The Lakers played last night. We've got hockey and I believe the second or third round of their playoffs as well. So, um, you know, all four major sports are going right now. And it's just it's it's cool to have. Right. Because we've never really had this before. Um, but it's just also interesting, you know, especially when we look at football with your right. There were no preseason games. There was no Hall of Fame game. They've had training camps, but, you know, in football, you, at some point you have to be able to have live contact and tackle. And, and for certain positions, like if you're a defensive lineman or a linebacker, tackling is key to your yeah. success to see if you can really play, right? Anyone can line up, um, you know, without shoulder pads and without a helmet and run around and catch passes. But it's, it, football is a physical game, so you want to see how... Um, you know, how physical, how intent these guys can really be. And so we're going to find out very quickly, uh, you know, with the lack of preseason games, how much that really does affect these teams. And also another thing, too, is for these rookies and, and undrafted guys, you know, they kind of caught a tough break this year because those yeah. preseason games are really where they're able to show themselves. And it, most people who, if you don't know, rookies don't get a lot of opportunities in practice. Right. It, it's the starters and and, you know, some of the backups that get the majority of the reps in practice. The rookies, especially if you're a quarterback, I mean, you might get like five or ten reps a game or in practice. Right. So you have to make every one of those count. And so I think it's been a tough off season for a lot of rookies and undrafted guys who haven't been able to prove themselves and are more than likely now on the street. Um, when in reality, in a normal off season, they would have had those preseason games to showcase themselves. I mean, you look at. James Harrison, Tony Romo, there's uh, uh, such a long list of guys. Those are just the top two that I can think of off the off my top of my head who have been undrafted players who have made a huge name for himself. Obviously, Tony Romo having a successful career in Dallas, James Harrison having a successful career in Pittsburgh. James Harrison, by the way, got cut in seven different uh, training camps, right? So his his persistence you know, kept going and going and going, and finally he made it. Um, and so hopefully these rookies can have that same type of, you know, mental fortitude and, and persistence and, um, you know, basically come back next offseason stronger. But that's that's the main thing that I'm looking at is, you know, I feel bad for a lot of these rookies. Yeah, no, I, I mean, um, it, you, you make a very good point how, how rookies don't get to really participate in practice. And you're probably wondering, okay, well, it's practice. Why isn't everybody involved? Well, practice in the NFL is where the starters they learn the playbook better. They run their plays. The the NFL, if you watch a preseason game, they're running vanilla playbooks. They they are not running what they normally would. So you know, really that that's where the you know the rookies, the undrafted free agents, um, the guys that are coming back into football, trying back out for the NFL, um, guys from the CFL, all that stuff, they're getting looked at by GMs. You don't watch a preseason game to see Tom Brady play. I mean, you might, it's a pretty cheap ticket, but like they, you're not really seeing, you know, Tom Brady right. or, or, or whoever else you want to say, you're, you're getting to see them a couple of plays. And then you're really just seeing Joe Schmo from, from, uh, from, you know, Michigan state 
trying out for the team, right? So <laughs> wow. It, Shot yeah. Michigan State, but okay. No, no, no. I didn't. I just, you know, I was going to say some other college. I didn't know if they had a football team. So I just said a T. I just said state. And I was like, there's a state, Michigan. All right, cool. No disrespect. No disrespect to Michigan State. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, it will be cool, I guess, next year uh, to see this flock of like almost double talent. Come back. Uh, maybe Dwayne Johnson and the XFL can help some of these guys out in uh, whenever that season can get good going. Too. Yeah, um, I think that could be really, really good for the XFL having all this, you know, a little bit more legitimate talent than even last time, right? Joining these uh, the, those rosters. So I hope for those guys that it's a lot better. I know personally too. Um, if you if you're not seeing, I'm wearing my Cardinals jersey. Uh, it's a Chandler Jones jersey. Shout out to Chandler Jones, the best defensive end in football. Um, <laughs> hey, 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 how, like, could argue that, but okay, it's could hard argue to argue that. with me. Sack is like the sack leader lasts like four years, and Jared, of course, is wearing his cowboy stuff. Um, this is what I'm going to put on. I'm surprising Jared with this, he doesn't know I'm going to put this on, but just to be a biased fan today on this podcast, I'm going to put on my Cardinals beanie. Wow, show the logo the entire time, you know, just it's so you only guys, like this, so it's you only guys, like. 85 degrees in Southern California and you know, we got fires burning all over the place and this guy's over here in a beanie. <laughs> I'm also wearing a shirt under this too. It's not very comfortable, Jared. And I probably will have trouble the last 10 minutes of this podcast, but uh, just so you viewers know too, I did give Jared the chance to wear something on his head too. And he did not choose to. So this is not, yes. I'm not. It's too hot. I have my air going on right now. Why would I want a beanie on? It's uh, orange. People, and, people know that I'm a Cowboys fan, okay? They That's don't need true. to see me a beanie on. I'm oh, sorry. yeah. But so uh, to, to two points to make about this, obviously, I'm being ridiculous. But um, my Cardinals did not um, pick any undrafted free agents for their roster or practice squad. And Cliff Kingsbury actually cited it was the lack of preseason games. 100% wide. Right. So, there's, I don't know if any other teams have said that, but I was kind of like, wow, that really sucks for those guys um, that, that even a team like the Cardinals, that's not necessarily like one of the best teams in the league, they still didn't even pick those guys because that's just the way it is. Now, the Cardinals do have pretty full roster this year. Like a lot of guys went on their practice squad that probably would have made a roster in the last couple of years. But still, uh, kind of shocking there that, that no undrafted free agents at all in the organization for the Cardinals. Yeah, the, Anthony Lynn. The head coach of the the LA Chargers. He was an undrafted rookie. Uh, I believe he was drafted by Denver. He ended up winning, uh, you know, backing up Terrell Davis, winning a couple of Super Bowls there, and that led to his then coaching career. And I believe it was on Hard Knocks. If if you've been watching Hard Knocks on HBO, he said he admitted, you know, if I didn't have those preseason games to play, he's like, I'd be, I forget exactly, but you know, selling insurance or doing something completely different. I wouldn't be in football right now, right? And so. You kind of have to feel for some of these athletes uh, that didn't get an opportunity this year. Will they even get an opportunity next year? Or will they be selling insurance or having to switch careers and, and completely do something different? So, you know, but we can't sit here and dwell on that. Uh, we, we need to be positive here and, and look towards the future, which is tomorrow, the start of the NFL season. And uh, let's get to predicting some of these some of these divisions and get some yeah. division winners and, and uh, who we think is going to make the playoffs. Yeah, and just so you guys know, we are going to be unbiased on this podcast today. Uh, I will be going over the NFC East because of the Cowboys, and Jerry will be going over the NFC West, much right. to my jealousy because I love that division this year, and there's plenty to talk about. But uh, we are going to you know we're going to keep the biases away because I think both of us probably would add a couple wins to our teams here and there. Uh, and, Never. And be- Hey, how dare you? <laughs> well, Jerry, it's a lot easier in your division because you have the Redskins and Giants to add wins. Like, it's it's not totally out of the picture. I can't really physically add two wins to any of the teams in the NFC West. Almost, I almost think it could be three and three for every single team in that division. So it's going to be it's going to be uh, elite. It, or like, at least that's what it's going to be. So uh, very exciting. But we will start with – we'll go with the AFC first because there's a lot more to talk about in the NFC this year than there is. Uh, so, Jared, you have the AFC East first. Uh, go ahead and discuss, and if I have any questions, I will ask you about them. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously the AFC East has been dominated for the last decade or two by the New England Patriots, right? We all know that the biggest story of the offseason, Tom Brady leaves New England. That was even the, the biggest story during last season, right? When Tom Brady was still a member of the Patriots was, you know, was he going to leave in the offseason? Was his relationship with Bill Belichick, how was that going to manifest? Were they going to... 
uh, you know, be able to kind of rekindle their relationship or were they going to kind of part ways? Obviously they did part ways and not too soon after the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers of all teams, it's still weird to see Tom Brady in a Tampa Bay Bucks uniform. Like I know it's been months already. He's practiced with the team. We've, we've seen multiple pictures and videos and all this stuff, but it's like, it's just weird to see certain players in different uniforms, right? When you see Brett Favre in a Minnesota Vikings uniform, um, it, it just, I don't know. It, it just doesn't sink in right, right? When you see Jerry Rice, not in a 49ers uniform, but in a Oakland Raiders uniform, there's just certain players that it, it it's just doesn't sit well, right? Um, but obviously, Tom Brady is gone. Cam Newton, insert Cam Newton, uh, you know, former MVP, took the Panthers to the Super Bowl in 2015. He comes in, is not only named a starter by head coach Bill Belichick, but is also one of the team captains. So that's interesting to note because, you know, obviously Bill Belichick takes that very, very seriously, and he just doesn't hand those accolades out to anyone. So I think that shows how well Cam Newton has adjusted to this Patriots team, and, and you know, hopefully he can kind of bring a different element and a different dynamic to what their Patriots are used to. And saying all that, I don't think the Patriots are going to make the playoffs. Uh, I think this division is the Buffalo Bills to lose. Uh, you, the, the Bills, they get Josh Allen, who's going to be coming into his third season. And I think coming into the league, Josh Allen, you know, was known for having one of the strongest arms in the league. He could throw it like 80 yards on his knees, all that stuff. But his accuracy and precision were two things that he needed to work on. And I think every single offseason, even leading up to this year, he's gotten better and better with that. He had uh, they added Cole Beasley to the slot last year that helped him out. And then this year they trade for Stephon Diggs. So they have a legitimate number one weapon on the outside. And I think that's really going to help solidify that Buffalo's Bills offense, not to mention to go along with their good defense. Head coach Sean McDermott, who came over from Carolina, is a defensive-minded guy, right? And so you know that he's going to have his handprint all over that. If I'm not mistaken, I believe they also signed uh, their star cornerback, Tredavious White, to a long-term extension this year, kind of locking him up. So one of the uh, you know best young talents at cornerback in all of the NFL. So I'm giving this entire division to Buffalo. And I think Buffalo will be the only team that comes out of the AFC East. I think the Jets and the Dolphins are both in somewhat of rebuilding stages. Obviously the Dolphins drafted to a Tiger Bailoa, uh, you know, this, this year, but he's going to be the backup. Uh, Fitz magic will still be the quarterback for Miami. And in New York, you have Sam Darnold and Le'Veon Bell, but that's really about it. You don't necessarily have any other pieces. Even on defense, they uh, lost linebacker C.J. Mosley, who decided to opt out because of the coronavirus. So that, you know, only hurts that team. So I'm looking at Buffalo to win the AFC East, and uh, that is it. And for the first time in a very long time, the New England Patriots will not only not win the division, but we will not see New England in the playoffs this year. Yeah, sure will be weird. Um, Jared, I have to agree with almost everything you said there. And, and by the way, how we're going to do this preview, too, is I'm not going to sit here and do my own predictions. We're going to pick divisions each time, and, and one of us will speak a lot more. And the other one, if they have a pressing question, uh, they will ask. I just wanted to throw a couple things out here. This, is the, this, this division, according to NBC Sports, um, every single team in here has uh, one of the uh, the most or the most difficult schedule this year. Uh, one oh, okay. of the because of that is because they play the NFC West in the in the NFC. Right. So that makes sense. Um, the Patriots have the most difficult schedule. The Jets number two, Miami number three, and the Bills number five. So again, you do have to look at that when you're saying, well, maybe Miami or the Jets can make the playoffs because the Patriots aren't good. Well, okay. Nah. You, you, they're not probably none of those teams are beating the 49ers, the Rams, or the Seahawks, or maybe even the Cardinals either. So it's like you have to look at that. Plus, you know, you have the Patriots are going to have to play the Ravens and all the first place teams too. So it's just it's not going to work for this division, and there will only be one team. I agree with you on that, Jared. Um, all right, so I will move to the AFC South uh, now. This is a very very um, interesting division, at least to me, besides the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'll just come out and say it, and Jared will agree with me. The Jaguars are rebuilding. Uh, they're tanking this year, uh, maybe for Trevor Lawrence, maybe for somebody else. I mean, they've given away anybody of value. Nick Foles to begin the offseason, and, and recently Yannick Ngakwe, who's one of the best interior defensive linemen um, in the game of football. That was a very 
um, brutal divorce as well on social media and stuff like that. Not good. Uh, and it shows the management with the Jaguars is not is it's not working well right you, now. You know what I think the Jaguars are doing, Nick? I think they're taking a page out of the Philadelphia 76ers when in, in you know years past, yeah, who was trust the process for years and years and years. They tanked to get the number one overall pick, right? And and now they're they've made the playoffs the last couple of years, but they still haven't gotten to the chip. And I think that's what the Jaguars are trying to do. I think they're taking a playbook out of the Philadelphia 76ers and saying, yeah. we're just gonna take for the next couple of years. You can't come out and actually say that because you'll get fined. But I look at the Jaguars as the Sixers of five years ago. Yeah, and uh, and tanking in the NFL is a lot easier because you get the number one pick, you get the number one pick. There's no lottery. Um, and I, you know, talk about that whatever you want, but that's the way it goes. So Jaguars are out of this. I'm going to talk about three teams. You know, the Colts, Titans, and Texans. I'll just come out and say it. I think all of them have a chance to win this division. Absolutely, all of them. Um, I think when you look at the strengths of each team, you obviously have Deshaun Watson with the Texans in that in that offense. Um, Deshaun Watson finally getting his an extension. I think that only helps Houston. You still have the Bill O'Brien effect as just a head coach in general, um, and I guess the general manager too. Uh, you can make all the jokes we want about DeAndre Hopkins and all that stuff, but you know he's doing the best he can, I guess, at, at, at that title, and we'll see how that ends up with him. But I think that offense is still really good. Defense. Not as great as it has been in years. You still have J.J. Watt. He's injury prone. No more J.B. on Clowney anymore, obviously. And a couple other missing pieces from the last couple of years. That defense won't be as good. But I think uh, in this modern-day NFL, you can get away and you can make the playoffs with a really, really stout offense. You look at the Titans. Obviously, we saw what happened last year with Derrick Henry and Ryan H Tannehill. Really, Derrick Henry. I want to talk about this defense, though. I think this is one of the best defenses in football, this Tennessee Titans team. And I think that's what will give them the best chance at making the playoffs. You got to believe that, you know, the NFL will have figured out somehow how to take a couple wins away from the Titans, uh, you know, running running system here. I don't think Derrick Henry will, will be able to dominate as much as he did last year. This is still a good team. But really, it's going to take, you know, three or four games here. I think they can lose or win, right, just based on their schedule as well. So um, I think the Titans also have a chance because of how good their defense is. And when you look at the Colts, this is actually the team I have, uh, you know, if I had to pick, winning the division. Um, and people might might think that's kind of a crazy <laughs> pick. I think Phillip Rivers behind this offensive line is a great thing. You know, he's been sacked year in, year out with the Chargers all these years. I think sitting behind a really, really good offensive line is going to do wonders for him. The rest of the offense, you know, average to say, maybe a, a little bit above average. But, um, yeah, I, I think this team, combined with their defense, is not, is not a bad defense. It's, it, it's a solid defense. It's not, not anything to talk about. But I think Phillip Rivers will actually be able to maybe burn out 10 wins or something like that and, and, and win this division. But like I said— I think um, all three of these teams have a chance. And if I had to pick, I think all three of these teams make the playoffs as well. Really? Yes. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that's a little, a little surprising. Uh, you know, listen, with, with the, the new contract for Deshaun Watson, I think that's going to be huge. And I look at Deshaun Watson as like uh, a mini Russell Wilson. I think what he does for his team with not as much talent is just surreal. Like Russell Wilson – you know, yes, he has DJ Metcalf, um, and and they've slowly finally gotten him some weapons. But you know, the last couple of years, it's been Russell Wilson and no one else, right? They're supposed to have a good running back core, and then the running backs get injured. But what Russell Wilson can do, basically leading a team on his own, is unmatched. And I think Deshaun Watson has some of those same capabilities to do a lot with not, you know, do a lot with less. So uh, you know, I, I can see Houston making the playoffs. Tennessee coming out of nowhere last year. I think their uh, identity is ground and pound, tough, hard nose, you know, 1990s football, none of this spread five wide stuff. And they're going to continue to do that. They're going to line up and they're going to say, beat us. Right. And, and you're going to be able to have to buckle up your chin strap and do it. And, and I don't know if many teams are prepared to play that style of football in today's, you know, in today's game. Mm -hmm. um, the Colts, I'm just going to say one thing. Do you trust Philly Ridd? A.K.A. Phil Rivers. You, has I do not. Had the I'm, I'm sorry. Line, has he ever had this type of offensive line? It, no, 
I, I think the Chargers have had a good offensive line in the past. I think they just dealt with injuries. I, you know, yes, he has a better offensive line than what he's had in the past. I just, you know, the regular season, yeah, he'll put up some numbers, right? He, he's like the, the MVP of the regular season. And then they sometimes squeak into the playoffs, and it doesn't matter if it's the first round or whatever, and he just doesn't show up. So I, I, I don't know, man. It, something about whenever you say Philip Rivers, it just rubs me the wrong way, <laughs> and I just can't get myself to put him in the playoffs. So, uh, you know, I, I can see Houston and Tennessee getting in, but the fact that you have three teams from the AFC South – um, that's interesting. And that also kind of tells me what you think about the rest of the AFC, uh, you know, seeing as you have three teams from the South getting in. Real quickly, too, the schedules for these teams, pretty middle of the road uh, in the low 20s as far as if you're ranking. So not difficult schedules. I think that also has to do with the fact they're playing each other, too, that you had to put that into it. Um, one quick also thing, Texans, number nine, di- difficult schedule. So even though they're in this division, I think it's probably because they they won it, correct? They won the division last year. They're going to have to play the Chiefs. They're going to have to play the Ravens. And that's probably what's what's moving up that 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 schedule. So I think the Texans actually are are, are realistically uh, probably would win the division normally, but because of that schedule, that's why I didn't have them winning the division. Just to clear that up, why I maybe have the Colts in there. You know, the the Texans are probably losing to the Chiefs and Ravens. So you take two wins away there. That's just explaining literally why I might have had the Colts as well. Um, did you, what was the question you just asked me really quickly or were we moving on to the the next division? Oh, no, we're good. We're good. Okay. Um, Um, But it was basically, if you trust Philip Rivers, that was my main question I asked you. Hey, Um, I I think, you know, he finally, Jared, he finally has a crowd behind him. (laughs) He he got, well, I guess actually. That's that's true too. But he does it though. At least the funneled in sound will be for him, right? The fans will actually have to cheer for him, but, but it will actually be. At an unfair advantage for the first time, everybody makes jokes about the Chargers, but it's, it's real. You go to the games, and it's the opposing team's crowd. Um, Phil Rivers has had to deal with an opposing crowd almost every game of his career. Um, all right, Jared, uh, you got the AFC North. The North, that's right. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens, Lamar, Axe, and Jackson, right? I, I don't really don't think I need to say much more. I will, but I don't have to. I was listening to Colin Cowherd's podcast, uh, and he – had the Ravens going 16 and 0. Now, I don't think we're going to see nah. a undefeated season. The last team to do that was the New England Patriots, I believe in 2009. 7. Seven? Seven. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, it was a couple years off. But yeah, I, listen, I think the the the, the NFL and teams are too good uh, to where you know, listen, you're going to have an off week and I, so I I don't see the Ravens uh, you know, going 16 and 0, but I do see the Ravens, uh, you know, potentially going 13 and three, even 14 and two. Um, what the Ravens did last year, and then getting bounced out of the playoffs by by the Titans, who were just a train running on the tracks. I, I think that is sticking with the entire Ravens team, especially with Lamar Jackson this year. Right? He was the MVP. He was on the cover of Madden. He's got all these accolades. Everyone's looking at him, uh, and, and I think. You know, the Ravens might have been smelling themselves a little bit too much. So I think this offseason, everything that I've read, all the reports, all the articles are saying that these guys have been done nothing but work. They put their heads down. They're not talking there about business. Right. And I think Lamar Jackson is going to solidify himself and saying, I'm not a, you know, one year wonder or anything like that. I am the real deal because he technically after this season can renegotiate his contract and be, you know, the next hundred plus million dollar quarterback if he does well and so that's another incentive for Lamar Jackson to play well let's talk about the the rest of his weapons that he has he has Mark Ingram they drafted J.K. Dobbins who was a a a star at the University of uh, Ohio State they've got Marquise Brown right Hollywood Brown one of the fastest receivers in the league and then Willie Sneed as well and a good offensive line not even to go to mention Mark Andrews right the the all the do it all tight end so that to go along with this Ravens defense, they drafted Patrick Queen to solidify that middle of their defense. Um, I, I think this Ravens team, especially because of the division they're in, no doubt, hands down, you can book it, will win the NFC North. Or I'm sorry, yes, the AFC North. Uh, where I'm struggling was looking at the rest of the division and saying, are any of these other teams, the Bengals, the Browns, the Steelers, good enough to make the playoffs? I think we can both agree, Nick, the Bengals, no chance. Yes, yes Joe Burrow is going to be their guy, number one overall draft pick. 
uh, was not only named the starter by head coach Zach Taylor, but was also named a captain. So I think that kind of speaks volumes to his maturity and leadership and uh, how he has grown in this offseason. But the Bengals, I'm sorry, they have way too many holes and it's not even worth our time to sit here and really go and dive into that. So we're going to look at the Browns and the Steelers, right? The Steelers get Ben Roethlisberger back. Um, can he stay healthy for a full 16-game season? I'm not so sure, right? It's, it's been a long time since he's been able to do that. Obviously, they don't have Le'Veon Bell anymore. Obviously, they don't have Antonio Brown. You've got Juju Smith-Schuster, and you have James Conner. But I'm not going to say that that's the triple B effect that they've had in years past. So yeah. my biggest question is, can Big Ben stay healthy? Because if he can't, the, the, I'm sorry, you don't, have a, you don't have a quarterback in the league. You can have the best defense in the world, which I think the Steelers do have a legitimate defense. But if you can't put up points, you're done, right? So I'm actually going to take out the Steelers from this equation. And you might find this a little shocking, Nick, but I'm putting the Cleveland Browns in the playoffs as one of the wild card teams. And here's why. Here's my main reason, right? I'm looking at their roster right now and specific, specifically their depth chart. Now, if I'm just reading this on paper, Tell me how this team, from an offensive standpoint, doesn't okay. make the playoffs, right? Baker Mayfield, former number one overall pick, hasn't lived up to the hype, but I would say is still a quality quarterback and, and you know has room to improve, and I think he can get better, right? Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, one, two, yeah. uh, kind of dual threat running backs. They just uh, extended Kareem Hunt for an extra two years, so he'll be with his team for a couple of years. Nick Chubb is just a complete workhorse, right? So you have those two coming out of the backfield. At receiver, you have Odo Beckham Jr., right? One of the one of the best receivers in the league. Jarvis Landry and Rashad Higgins, who's a great slot player. And then you trade for Austin Hooper, uh, and you get him from Atlanta in the offseason. Like, on paper, how does this offense not score 40 points a game, and yeah. how does this not win 10 10, get 10 wins in a season, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this roster. I'm saying they've got to be better than what they were last year. And the main reason why also, I think Baker Mayfield is in a make it or break it year, right? Baker Mayfield's going on his third year now. He's underachieved in his first two. I think this is his year to basically say, okay, I'm going to get it right with the plethora of weapons that I just mentioned, or he's going to fail and I think Baker Mayfield will be out of a job by next year. The NFL stands for not for long, right? And you only get so many opportunities, whether you're a first-round pick or whether you're an undrafted rookie. So Baker Mayfield, with all those weapons and all of that talent that I just said, how do you not you know, utilize that and turn that into wins, especially in a division with other than the Ravens, I don't think is that good. I just mentioned the reasons with the Steelers, and obviously we can both agree on the Bengals not being that good. So. Uh, you know, I didn't even need to go into the defense with the Browns because if the Browns can average 25, 30 points a game, that's all they need to do. Yeah. And so I'm surprisingly picking the Browns uh, to to not only get double digit wins, but to make the playoffs. Hey, I think the you know, the 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 one thing now say about why you have the Browns in the playoffs and I don't and maybe I have the Texans or the Titans in the playoffs and I don't have the Browns. Uh, you know, it, it's Baker Mayfield. You, you mentioned it. You mentioned all those weapons, but who was one of the main reasons why that team wasn't su successful? It was Baker Mayfield. The other problems, obviously, had Miles Garrett getting suspended for the rest of the year for that idiotic thing he did earlier. Right. Uh, and this that team was extremely undisciplined, too. Fighting, um, penalties, breaking records for, like, how many holding penalties they had. Like, it, it, you know... It, it all it all looked on the coach, right? It was uh, I'm forgetting the guy's name. He used to be a card. Freddie Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens, yeah. So should have never been the coach in the first place. Should never. That's a whole other topic. Yeah, um, and, and obviously you have Kevin Stavansky now. I think that's an upgrade. Um, I think this team has gotten you know amazingly better on offense. The offensive line is 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 good, right? Uh, but it's Baker Mayfield. You can have all of those things. Um, and you still cannot win. And we've seen that in the past when a quarterback is not very good. Uh, you know, I mean, I think the Bears at least were set up last year to be a playoff team and Mitchell Trubisky completely ruined that. And that's where I'm going to point this. You know, I don't think Baker Mayfield is Mitch, Mitchell Trubisky, but he sure isn't. A, he is, sure isn't playing like a number one pick right now. Um, and, and I do think that is where you have to look. 
Um, the Browns are still the Browns. Now I'm not going to put them in the playoffs over more established teams or a defense like the Titans or, or a team like the Texans, right? Or or the Colts who have, you know, a very solid team, uh, a good coach, and, and, and Phillip Rivers, who I think is, you know, on his last leg, really going all or nothing. So that's where I have that. Um, to get to your point, though, too, Jerry, just to mention real quick things before we move on to the last AFC uh, uh, conference, um, the, the this division does have a very, very easy schedule as well. So it does help out your point. You know, I just think Baker can still blow that, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say he's gonna make the playoffs until he actually does. It's one of those things. I also don't trust Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry either as your top receivers. I think there's a little selfishness between those guys as well, especially with Odell, and I just think that needs to be figured out before um, that with the quarterback situation. You know, it, it, it needs to be figured out before I say. I'll say back. this: winning solves a lot of things. You start yeah. winning games, guys are. Guys are gonna, you know, they're gonna put their check their egos at the door. They're not gonna be worried so much about catches and you know getting a thousand yards and all that stuff. The Browns haven't won in a long time, right? And I think they need to, uh, they kind of need to feel that, right? They they just they don't know anything else. All they know is kind of individual stats and losing. That's what they're kind of known for. So I think if they can kind of put all that aside and say, okay, you know, if I'm Odell, I will sacrifice some of my catches for kind of going down and, and you know getting better at blocking, right? Knowing that I have Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt in the backfield who are two absolute beasts and they can both be on the field for all three downs. So, you know, maybe the Browns, especially with head coach Stefanski, like you mentioned, coming over from Minnesota, he's used to running the ball first. And I think that's what the Browns need to do is run the ball, solidify that, and then you yeah. get the play action and the passing game off of that. Because when Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry are being played one-on-one -on -one, when you can't double team them, when you can't have two safeties back, that is a nightmare for a defensive coordinator, right? You have to stack the box because of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, but you also have to solidify the running game in order to do that. And I think that's where the Browns need to start is with the run. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it says that the passing game, uh, it, it, it's just going to be, in my opinion, all on Baker Mayfield. Uh, so moving on to the AFC West, you know, this is a very interesting division too, because, um, more down below the Chiefs. We all, the Chiefs are going to make the playoffs, right? Like, we all know that. Patrick Mahomes is the best player in the NFL. They have Tyreek Hill. They have everybody you best can Best player imagine. in the world. Not just the NFL. Best yeah. player in the world. Well, exactly. Yeah, it's, it, it, the, the guy's unbelievable, right? So, I don't need to explain the Chiefs. And they'll probably win the division because the rest of these teams are not elite. Uh, but I still think one of these teams can make the playoffs um, in this AFC West. So, I'm not going to discuss the Chiefs. I'll just discuss the three other teams, the Broncos, the Raiders, and the Chargers. If you look at the Chargers, you, they're starting Tyrod Taylor, not Justin Herbert. It's the end of the Philip Rivers year. They also lose Derwin James. I think that eliminates them. Uh, unfortunately, really? I'm, not, I'm not going to go more in depth on the Chargers. Uh, they're moving into the new stadium, right? Um, they're not really moving into the new stadium because there's no fans, right? So I guess, like, they're not playing on a soccer field, but, like, I don't really think it makes that much of a difference. And, and Tyrod Taylor, you know, he kind of – Tyrod Taylor's never been the guy, right? Since He's a bridge. He's a bridge. Yeah, exactly. He's a bridge. So that bridge teams don't make the playoffs, right? And especially when you lose your best defender or at least your second best defender, Joey Bosa's damn good too. Um, I think that hurts a lot, and especially this late in the, this late in the preseason. I mean, it just happened this week. So – you know, I, I think the Chargers don't really have a chance. And especially, Jared, look, look how many teams we've said might make the playoffs already. It ain't going to be the Chargers with Tyrod Taylor or Justin Herbert. Like, maybe Justin Herbert comes out and it is just unbelievable, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, you look at the Raiders and Broncos, and I think this is where you look um, at, at, at some teams that could surprise some people this year. Uh, I think with the Oakland Raiders, I think they're just getting better and better. Gruden's getting more of his handle on things. I think last year was an absolute fiasco with Antonio Brown and, and um, hard knocks and all that BS that went on with that. Um, Spider I think that, to a banana. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think Gruden is still a good coach. Uh, Derek Carr had a good year last year. Uh, let's hope he can uh, keep that up. I think that's really what's going to have to happen here. Derek Carr is going to have to play like an elite quarterback or they're not going to make the playoffs. Um, I think something that will hurt them is the fact that they 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 said already there's no fans uh, allowed, and it's strange to me because you look at Nevada and the casinos are open, 
So right. why can't you allow 10,000 fans, 5,000, you, so the whole year? So you're telling me till New Year's, there's nobody allowed in that stadium. I think that will affect them, right? Like, I think playing in front of nobody the whole season is going to suck when the rest of the league probably will allow fans halfway through the year at least, right? So that's going to hurt them. Um, I think this defense is is improving. I think, you know, you have Gruden's mark on that as well. Um, I think this team is really close, um, but they're just not right there. And I think this AFC is tough, and I don't think the Raiders will win. And so I'm giving it away. I think the Broncos will make the playoffs this year. I think the Broncos are a, a surprise team this year. I like Drew Locke uh, for a bad team or a bad team and a bad offense last year. That that man looked like a, a, a top-tier quarterback, at least moving in that direction. Um, they improved on offense. Jerry Judy, that's all I'm going to say. They got Jerry Judy. That, that, that's pretty damn good. Um, and then also you have that defense starting to return to form. This team reminds me a little bit of the Titans, right? Maybe the offense isn't fully there, uh, but the defense is there. And that's why I think the Broncos will sneak into that seventh spot, that sixth, seventh spot in the playoffs. And, and I think they'll be able to beat teams like the Raiders and Chargers. Um, let me check their schedule really quick, what, what that is looking like. Give me one second. So not not that easy of a schedule, about right in the middle. Uh, but I think this team is better than what teams expect. So when you look at you know look at that schedule, I think they're putting in some teams that uh, you know might not be as good as you really think that they're playing. But yes, yeah, so I'm going to go to the Broncos. So Jerry, what, what what's your opinion? Do you agree with me? Do you think the Broncos have a chance to make the playoffs? Do you think another? Hell team? no. You don't think so? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. I'm shocked. I thought you might be on the Broncos train. I'm 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 baffled right now. Sorry, I need to take out my. I need to make sure that I'm I'm hearing you correctly. Uh, listen, this is this is some unfortunate news that came down late yesterday. Uh, Von Miller is uh, basically done for the year. He injured his ankle and kind of a freak accident yesterday. The Broncos weren't even practicing in pads; they were just in shorts and, and t-shirts, uh, and I believe they had helmets on. And it was a freak ex- freak incident uh, at the end of practice where he hurt his ankle. He's getting a second opinion, but the word uh, early diagnosis is that he's going to have to have surgery and be out for the year. Von Miller is one of the fiercest and best pass rushers this game has ever known, right? And so for the Broncos to lose that, I think is going to be huge. Just like you mentioned the loss of Derwin James for the Chargers, I think this loss for the Broncos is even bigger because Von Miller is a pass, pass rusher, I'm sorry, and can affect the quarterback quicker than a safety or a corner can, right? And in more ways. So, you know, I'm looking at this defense right now that that you think is pretty good, and I actually don't think it's going to be that good at all. Um, they have Jarrell Casey up front, who they got from the Tennessee Titans, who's very underrated, came out of USC. So I know a little bit about him from following USC, um, but he didn't get that much, you know, of a look because Tennessee just doesn't get that many ratings, right? Unless you live yeah. in Tennessee, you're probably not following that team. Jarrell Casey is a very good defensive end slash defensive tackle. Then you've got A.J. Bouye, uh, who they traded from Jacksonville, who's a very good corner. And uh, that's about it. You know, Bradley Chubb is is another edge guy that is more than likely going to replace Von Miller. But Bradley Chubb really hasn't solidified his draft status yet as being a top draft pick and coming in and making an impact on this team. The rest of their secondary and their linebackers, I'm sorry, is not good. And... And, you know, in a division where you're going up against Keelan, uh, Keenan Allen, where you're going up against Patrick Mahomes and the plethora of weapons that the Chiefs have, I, I think this defense is going to get run over. Now, I do like what you said about the offense, where I think Drew Locke is coming into his own. They signed Melvin Gordon to pair with Philip Lindsay in the backfield. And then you've got the two-headed monster at receiver uh, with Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy. I think that's a, a very nice young core on the offensive side of the ball. Unfortunately, I think this defense isn't going to be able to stop a nosebleed this year. And like I said, it's just unfortunate that uh, Von Miller more than likely won't be able to be on the field to help contribute for this team. So for those reasons, I, there's no way that I can put the Broncos in the playoffs, um, you know, not without that. Well, Jared, we'll just have to disagree. I, I, I do think that, you know, Jarrell Casey will, will will make an impact on this team. I think Bradley Chubb, I just think highly of that guy. And I think, obviously, it would have helped more with Von Miller, right? I do think that guy is is going to potentially be a superstar as well, though. So you, you got to look at that as, like, you still have a really good, you know, edge rusher. And so I'm going to give him credit. 
I gave AJ Bouye credit too. You know, he was always the guy they were kind of throwing at in Jacksonville when when Jalen Ramsey was the corner, obviously. So maybe a little unfair uh, criticism towards him because he's allowing more because Jalen Ramsey's literally not getting thrown at. You know, more reps for that guy. I think Justin Simmons, from what I've heard just in the Denver ranks, is becoming one of the team leaders on that defense. Very underrated. Bryce Callahan's a pretty good secondary corner. It's rearing its ugly head. Like, you look at the Nick Foles Super Bowl thing. I think that's more of a thing than people want to believe it is. Uh, when you look at um, how Nick Foles has gone uh, has gone with Doug Peterson and been more successful than Carson Wentz, like, every single year in the playoffs that they play with each other, and the fact that Carson Wentz last year did what they did and, 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 and all that stuff, I just think, like, like they shouldn't have made the playoffs, right? The Eagles were not a playoff team, and they made the playoffs because of whatever, right? Because the, the Cowboys just for some reason fell apart. Um, I don't think this team is a playoff team. They haven't improved enough. And I think the Carson Wentz-Doug Peterson uh, thing is over. And you're not going to take away your quarterback because you're signing him long term. you got to fire somebody, and it's, it's going to be the coach. So – I think this is going to be the year that shows that the Eagles and Doug Peterson are just not going to work out. I know they won the Super Bowl um, a couple of years ago, but the NFL, like you mentioned, Jared, is not for long. And that includes coaches as well. So, uh, yeah, I think the Cowboys win this division. I think they're the only playoff team. 
I mean, I'm, I'm not going to sit here uh, and, and argue with you about the Cowboys making the playoffs, of course. <laughs> I, you would. I, I will say I'm a little shocked that you don't think that uh, Doug Peterson will continue being the coach. I think he's done a great job for that team. that and saying no I'm, I'm really retired and of course when Tom Brady goes down to uh, you know to Florida uh, the, the sunshine state uh, it seems like they're, they'll be able to have a little more fun uh,
years with with adding pieces, and I think they're only going to help complement. So this Saints team to me is is they are without a doubt one of the top teams, if not the top team in all of the NFC uh, the NFC conference as a whole. So while I have the Buccaneers making the playoffs, I have the Saints as the winner of that division. Unfortunately, you know the Falcons and the Panthers. Yeah. I think there's just too much firepower to go around, basically not enough spots. Yeah. The Falcons have weapons. You have Matt Ryan. You have Julio Jones. You have Calvin Ridley. And, and you even pick up um, uh, you, you pick up an all-pro running back this offseason in Todd Gurley, yeah. right? So on paper, you would think this Atlanta Falcons team can score points. It takes a wild turn when you look at this defense, right? Because other than... Grady Jarrett at defensive tackle, Deion Jones, and Keanu Neal. That's not good. This defense is, is pathetic, Terrible. to say the least. Like, and, and when you have Dan Quinn as your head coach, who is a defensive-minded guy, and yet this team has not been able to uh, you know, put resources into this defense, it's kind of like mind-boggling. You know what I mean? I mean, if, if you're the head coach, right? You're one of the guys that makes the final decisions – and yet you haven't been able to bring in more talent on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, I don't know if they're just trusting in his schemes that, you know, you don't necessarily need great players or superstars and that you, his scheme will make players better. But over the last two years, we've seen that that is just simply not true. You need stars. I think the Saints. But, you know, you have.
good enough to make the playoffs. Um, so I got Packers and Vikings make the playoffs. I have the Vikings winning the, the, the division for sure, though. I think they're a 12 and four uh, team this year, maybe even better potentially. Maybe one win here if they can beat some good teams. But uh, yeah, no, I, I really like the uh, I really like the Vikings this year. Yeah, no, I'm actually right there with you. I think the Vikings will win the division, and, and the Packers. Listen, they had a good year last year record wise, yeah. and just think of it this way: this is like- the second, this is the second full off season that Aaron Rodgers and Matt Lafleur have been able to, uh, you know, get together. So Aaron Rodgers is only going to get better in this new offensive system, right? Last year it was kind of a, a whirlwind in the beginning, and so he's had a full off season to kind of gain uh, the trust of Matt Lafleur and really work on that offense, and so. If the Packers, you know, have a good have a good year last year, I believe. What was their record last year? Did they go? I'm looking it up. They were they had a really good record last year. Yeah, was it like 12 and four or yeah, something like, like that? that? Very yeah. unexpected. So if they go 12 and four in the first year with their head coach, what do you think they're going to do this year? Right now, the only thing I will say is, how do you not add more weapons for Aaron Rodgers? You know, you have Devontae Adams and you have Aaron Jones in the backfield. But in the second round of the draft, they draft a running back as opposed to another receiver. Because I'm looking at will make the playoffs as they're not winning the division
I don't know who it's going to be. Look, look just, just go ahead and pick your Cardinals. You can no, be no, biased. That's no, okay. okay I know this. you want I don't want to. No, no, because here's the thing. I don't know, right? The the Cardinals were 5-11 and 11 last year. Um, I believe it was like 5-10-1 or whatever it was. I, I don't know, because I, you look at that tie, that could right. easily be the win. So you look at realistically 16-10, and 10, six, 6 and 10 at best. Would you take away that stupid tie at the beginning of the season, right? Um, not bad for the worst team the year before, right? By far the worst NFL team the year before. Um, so, you know, not terrible. You look at the worst to first. That's happened a lot recently. To just give the Cardinals some credit. One thing I'll say about the Cardinals compared to the Rams and Seahawks. The Cardinals are getting better every year in a lot of things. To get Their defense got better. You got Isaiah Simmons. You got multiple other guys coming back. Patrick Peterson's not suspended to start the season. Chandler Jones is still a monster. There's a lot to look like about that Cardinals defense compared to last year, which was the worst. They were the worst defense in the league. Can't get much worse, right? Um, and the offense got better. Uh, the coaching staff is getting more used to the, the the talent, all that stuff. You have a quarterback in Kyler Murray. Lots of things to look up to. The Seahawks and Rams. The Seahawks don't have a good de- offensive line. They don't got a good defensive line. Um, their defense is, on, just to be honest, getting worse and worse every year. And really, the only thing to look at is Russell Wilson. Yes, can he win games? But, I mean, are they really going to have the home field advantage, all that stuff that they normally have? I don't think so. So I think that affects them, too. And you look at the Rams. I do think the Rams will be better this year. I think that. I just don't know. Like I Undrafted free agents and stuff playing on the line, it was not good. And so, one seeds, because that's a little bit more important this year. Those are the only teams getting the buys. restrictions and everything going on that you're right there is uh the
I have the and the AFC South. Thing going on there because uh, listen, as big of a Cowboys fan as I am, I ain't spending twelve grand to go see the team play. I'm sorry, I, I will I will gladly watch from my big screen TV at, at my house. Um, so yeah, I think that was somewhat of a, a, a mishap or something like that. Um, you know the. <laughs> 